Hi, I'm Michael Wickland. I'm general manager of the Human Factors Research and Design Group at Emergo by UL. Medical device manufacturers are actually under a lot of pressure. Recent that there has been an epidemic of medical error that has cost a lot of lives, hundreds of thousands, depending on which report you read. And so there's a call to action. The FDA in the United States responded to that dilemma, the epidemic of medical error, by doing many things. Uh, one of the things that they've done is they've established expectations that manufacturers apply human factors rigorously during the development process and ultimately are able to do usability testing of a medical device to prove that people can use it and more specifically to prove that it's safe to use. We do things like hazard analysis, task analysis, we look at the history of known problems with other kinds of devices that have similarities to the one we're working on. We take all of those resources to form a list of all the possible errors somebody could make interacting with a product. So it sounds like we have to be professional pessimists. And what we do then is we look at every opportunity to eliminate the chance of that error occurring and after that guarding against that error or warning about behaviors interactions that could lead to potential harm. What you want to do is you want to conduct research early in the development process to fully understand users' needs and preferences and then turn those insights into requirements, product requirements. During the middle of the development effort, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to do to meet the uh, regulatory guidance uh, put forth by the FDA and other regulators, particularly in Europe. And the idea is that you want to understand very broadly and deeply how people will interact with the product and where there might be risk. Risk that somebody could make a mistake that could end up causing injury or even death. And you want to identify those risks. We also can help our customers design a user interface. Somebody has to decide what goes on computer screens, where you place controls, what kind of labels go on a product, what kind of instructions are written, what kind of training people get to use the product. And that takes a human factor sensibility. So you get your payback first and foremost by getting to market, whereas otherwise you wouldn't. But an investment in the quality of the user interface associated with the medical device pays back in many ways. Uh, it could give you a competitive advantage. People like your product better because they find it more appealing, more usable. Um, you can cut down on product returns or calls for service because people figure out how to use it and don't think it's broken or don't need to call for help to figure it out. Um, you can save time in training because a simple to use product doesn't require as much training. People get it. They can master it sooner. Our Human Factors Research and Design Group has a global footprint. We have a team in Chicago. Uh, in Concord, Massachusetts, which is near Boston. We've got a team in Cambridge, England, and we've got a team in Utrecht, which is near Amsterdam in the Netherlands. We also have some teammates in Tokyo.